Okay, first thing we're going to start with is just a simple overhand knot. Just like tying your tennis shoes, you just go around the rope and you come back through the backside. This is a simple overhand knot. This is gonna stir, serve as a stopper knot when we tie our systems. All right, the next thing we're gonna tie here is a clove hitch. When you tie a clove hitch, if you take a loop and fold it away from you, and then you tie another loop towards you, they're opposing there, okay? One loops back behind, one loops over the top. If you simply invert them and you put whatever it may be, like this PK Safety or PK Company's pin, right here, that is a clove hitch. I will do that one more time for you again. I have a loop away, and then a loop to me. They're different. This loop's behind, this loop's over the front. You invert them. That's all you have to do. And then you can put, if you're, you're raising a fire extinguisher, um, an ax, a broom, whatever, When you set that, you see you have your two ropes running opposite directions with your bar over the, the diagonal bar over the top of both of them. That is a clove hitch. Okay, when we're tying a set of wristlets, you need to, just like you were doing when you tied a clove hitch, you need to make your loop. One loop away and one loop to you. Just like we did when we were tying a clove hitch. All right? In a clove hitch, we inverted them and we put them all the way together. Well, this time we're going to stop just shy of that and make a pretzel. As you can see, it looks just like a pretzel. I'm going to grab this edge of this loop by reaching behind this loop. Same thing with the edge of this loop, I'm gonna grab from the front side. Because if I didn't, and I grab this from the front and this loop from the back, it would simply fall apart. So I'm going to reach from behind here and grab this loop, reach from the front and grab, and I'm going to pull. And this is a set of wristlets. So when you get a person's hands in here or their ankles in here, just like this, and then as you start to pull them tight, you see how they cinch around my wrists, and then you could pull straight out of a hole by pulling this way. Same thing, you can use ankles, whatever it needs to be, to pull somebody out of a confined space. Okay, we're going to tie a square knot, and Probably the most common way is you take two terminated ends here. You go right over left, underneath, like we're gonna be tying a granny knot or an overhand knot. And then we're gonna go right over left and underneath. And you simply pull them down. If you notice here, those two bars will simply slide away from one another. That is a square knot. There's another way that we're going to tie this square knot, and instead of using the left over right, right over left method, we're going to use um, a hitch we're going to focus on here a little bit later, and what we're going to do is we're going to tie a girth hitch. And when you tie a girth hitch, I'm going to take a bite of rope just like I have here. I'm going to take my bite and I'm gonna bring it back onto itself, not behind it. I'm bringing it back onto itself. 
just like this. I have my two bunny ears. I'm going to push them together just like this. And I'm going to hold that. Notice now I've canned it sideways. I've got my two bunny ears together. I'm going to take my other terminated end of my rope and I'm going to bring it through and then right back onto itself. I'm going to hang on here. I'm going to hang on to my tail and my working end here that's going to my rope bag and I'm going to simply pull it. Now, right here, I can't pull anymore. But if I take this bar and I rotate this bar over the top and I pull, I have a square knot. We're going to use this application at the bottom of our sked when we actually tie um, somebody in and do some patient packaging later on. Okay, the next thing we're gonna tie is the butterfly, otherwise known as the alpine butterfly. There's several different ways that you can tie this. Um, there's a wrap method, which is oftentimes easy for people. I'm going to take my tail, my working end, and I'm going to put it over my hand, okay? I'm going to take my um, running end that's going to the bag, and I'm going to bring it around the back side and over to the left. See that? It's going to the left of my first wrap. I'm going to do the exact same thing, keeping everything to the left. Now, that second wrap, which is this one right here, I'm going to pull some slack in that. I am going to take this bite right here and I'm going to tuck it back behind these two ropes along my palm, just like this, and I'm gonna poke it through, just like I've done here. I'm going to grab the bite now, remove my hand, and I'm gonna to start to pull down. I don't set this yet because this alpine butterfly is not set till you pull your two ropes away from one another. Now, this is an alpine butterfly. This is an inline multi-directional knot. There are some other knots that you can do for inlines. You can tie an inline eight um, is one of the other more common ones. The problem with an inline eight is it's only a single direction because in our application and rescues being so dynamic, we like a multi-directional inline knot and we use the butterfly for that application. That is one way to tie that butterfly. Another way, which I actually prefer, is called the pretzel method. So I'm gonna take a bite of rope. I am going to twist once. Notice these ropes, I allow them to spin because if I didn't, I didn't allow them to spin if you notice how that thing starts to get all bunched up, because these ropes wanna stay in the line that they're in. So I let them spin on my fingers here. If you notice, these rotated, and I'm going to do that again. So I actually make one full turn with this bite here. I'm going to hang on to these just like this. Now, I'm going to take the end of my bite I'm gonna bring it back to my thumb. And again, it looks like a little pretzel. That's why they call this the pretzel method. I am going to grab this edge of my loop from the back side, but I'm going to grab it through the top loop in my pretzel, or my top opening in my pretzel. So I'm going to reach through here, I'm gonna reach underneath, and I'm gonna grab that section of the rope. And I'm simply going to pull it through just like this. I don't set anything because it's not set until I pull those ropes apart. And there you have the Alpine butterfly. Okay, what we're going to tie now is a double fisherman's. Basically what you're going to have is 
two opposing barrel knots. You can use this for joining two ropes together. And another application is we're going to use that for our prussic later on in this series. <clears throat> okay, with these two separate ropes together, I like to have my tail underneath, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger over this top rope. Here's my tail end, and I'm going to go from the back side. I'm going to do one wrap, another wrap, all the way back around, and now I'm going to move my finger and I'm gonna put this rope right back through where my finger was, and I'm going to pull it tight. Now, I'm going to rotate everything around. Here's my other tail. Notice my tail now is on the top side of this loop. I want it on the bottom side. So we are going to rotate everything around and I'm gonna roll that barrel knot to where it's laying flat in front of me and I have my tail on the bottom side of my loop here. I'm going to do exactly what I did before. I'm going to lay my finger over the top. I'm going to wrap from behind once, stay to the left twice, all the way back around just like this. I'm gonna move my finger out and I'm going to tuck this rope right back down where my finger was. And I'm going to pull. I'm gonna set those. Now, if I grab both of my ropes here and I pull and I set it, you should have one, two, three, four bars side by side. You rotate it over and you have two X's side by side. This is a double fisherman's. Okay, the next thing we're gonna tie here is a water knot. It is about the only knot we're going to tie in webbing. So the first thing we're going to do is I want to tie an overhand knot in this webbing, but I wanna make sure I leave enough for a safety, just like we've tied in our other knots. So I'm gonna leave about 12 inches or maybe a little bit more. And I'm just going to simply tie an overhand knot. So you can see I crossed it over itself. Push this through. And I have a simple overhand knot. Notice how it's not set. I wanna make sure that I keep, keep it nice and loose for right now. Now, I wanna make sure however long my webbing is, that everything is still laying flat all the way through. One way to help you remember which side goes to what is you can see the black dotted line here on one side. There's no line on the other side. So what I wanna do is if you look at this tail coming out, there's no line, turn it over, there's a line. I'm going to put dotted line to dotted line or no line to no line. Regardless, it doesn't really matter. But just like in our follow, uh, figure eight follow through or our figure eight on a bend, we're going to retrace this up and around, back through. So now my tail will end up over here. Opposite side of right here. So I'm going to start dotted line to dotted line, and I'm going to simply follow this through. Notice I'm going through this loop here, and I'm following it. Pull out plenty of rope, or plenty of webbing. I'm going to follow it around, dotted line to dotted line. Again, I'm gonna follow it around, back behind the tree there, up over the top, and through this loop. And as you start to set, you then just pull them equally, 
dress them as you pull. That is a properly tied water knot. You have a tail on this side, a tail on this side. So then, just like we did with all the other knots, going to come over the top, overhand knot. I'm going to put it right beside my other knot there. Same thing over here, overhand knot. and I'm gonna set it there. Now, I have a water knot with two safeties. Okay, you can see the green rope here in front of you. Notice what I have here. I have the four bars and the two X's. Very, very short tails. This is our double fisherman's. In this section of rope here, this is what we call a Prussix. Um, they do make manufactured Prussix cords that are stitched together. My personal opinion, I like the tied ones just because I tie them and, and uh, I'm confident with it. You're probably not gonna get this undone because I have set it with as much force as I can. As you can see, they're not moving at all. But to do a Prussix wrap, what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a section of rope and this prussic is going to act as a safety for us. What I like to do is I use the knot itself to tie or make these wraps. That way I know exactly where I'm at. I'm going to put my prussic over my static rescue rope and I'm going to make one wrap. I'm going to make a second wrap and then I'm going to make a third wrap all the way around. Now, you never want to put pressure on this knot, so I want to pull one side more than the other, and I'm going to get all these wraps nice and smooth, just like I did on this side. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And that is a proper Prussic wrap. Three wraps. I'm not pulling on the knot. I'm pulling on the rope here. And if you notice, this can slide up and down this rope. But if I've hooked into this for some reason and this rope starts to slide, what it will do is it will grab and stop you. We'll use this on our Prussic mounted pulleys as an added safety if for some other reason something happened the rope started to slip this prussic is going to grab this rope and the person descending it's going to catch them before they actually fall okay, okay the last thing we're going to i'm going to show you is called the munter hitch the munter hitch you can use as a belay. You can actually repel with a munter hitch. Um, it does put a ton of friction on your ropes and even your hardware. So it, it's certainly not the sought after method for a repel, but it does work good for a belay. Um, I use it a lot if I'm going to lower something real heavy off of a structure. Instead of doing the hand over hand method, I can tie uh, munter hitch into a carabiner and uh, simply lower that down and I can use two fingers to low several, lower several hundred pounds without putting any stress on myself. So tying that girth hitch just like I did before, I bring that bite back onto itself. Remember I'm going to take these bunny ears and I'm going to push them together just like this. Now, once I do that, if you look, that's my girth hitch, which we had tied before. If I hold that here and I take one, my tail end out, 
and I insert a carabiner right where my fingers are and I clip that in. What you see here is a munner hitch. Munner hitches will roll so I can pull force here and you watch that munner hitch roll over. And now I can lower something to the ground and all I have to do is pull back on this. See how this bar starts to add more friction to my, my rope that's going to my load? And I can simply stop it using two fingers. That's a munner hitch.